So I made a mistake in my most recent video on the GFX 100 RF. I had said that it contained an X-Trans sensor when actually it uses a Bayer sensor. So I've got a standing policy around here that when I make a mistake in a video, I either put egg all over my face or I make another video that helps the audience understand the very concept that I made the mistake on. Actually, the egg is a lot more fun, but no. Hi everyone and welcome to Pal to Tech. Digital camera sensors are made to capture both light and color. When you take a shot, light travels through your lens and then of course hits your sensor. And then your camera converts this captured light into electrical signals. These electrical signals are proportional to the intensity of the light. And it is converted into a final digital image before it's saved out to the SD card. So that's capturing light. But what about color? When it comes to capturing color, your camera sensor is covered with something called a color filter array. This covering, right, contains individual red, green, and blue filters, and they're all arranged in a specific pattern. In most cameras, it looks like this. So think of these individual filters as parts of a stained glass window. Up close, each individual tiny filter allows a specific color to pass through. But when you step back and you look at that stained glass window and you look at how all of the colors are combined, that is when you see the final image. And so the process that your camera uses to assemble and process the various filters, including estimating missing colors and other tasks is called demosaicing. If you shoot in JPEG format, then all of that light and color information has already been processed for you and you get that final image file, right? You just open it right up, good to go. However, if you're shooting in raw format, then this data has not yet been demosaicked, okay? It's just a file containing a collection of unprocessed data that comes from your camera's sensor and it will require you to use post-production software to perform that demosaicing step to create that final image. So the difference between a Bayer sensor and an X-Trans sensor has to do with the arrangement of these red, green, and blue filters. A Bayer sensor is much more common and it's traditional and uses a two by two pattern that contains two green filters and one red and one blue. And this repeats itself in a pattern that goes directly across your camera's sensor. However, Bayer sensors often use a special low pass filter in order to fix imperfections during capture, such as moiré. And the problem with Bayer sensors using a low pass filter is that the filter sort of blurs out the light before it hits the sensor. And this can sometimes result in your image being less sharp and lacking clarity. Now, Fujifilm decided to go a different route. They came up with the X-Trans sensor, which uses a six by six array pattern. This filter pattern is arranged in a less predictable way compared to the Bayer pattern. You see that right here? This is Bayer, this is X-Trans. Because of the type of array that this is in an X-Trans sensor, occurrences and imperfections of moiré and other problems are reduced or eliminated. And because of that, you do not need a low pass filter at all. And because of that, you get, in theory at least, more image detail and more clarity. X-Trans working hard for you to provide a better quality and more pleasing image. Sounds great, right? Well, like anything in life, there is a trade-off. Unlike a traditional Bayer sensor, demosaicing in X-Trans sensor data requires more sophisticated algorithms and programming. And it seems that a number of software companies just do not want to spend the time, research, and money to improve the demosaicing process for Fujifilm X-Trans files. At times, it really does feel like the Wild West when it comes to editing Fujifilm RAW files and getting those files to exactly match what your Fujifilm camera officially, specifically intends for that film simulation look. So for example, if you choose classic Chrome on your Fujifilm camera and your Fujifilm camera in camera processes that and outputs the JPEG file, that will be the official version of it. Everything from the light to the shadows to the color, everything. However, 
If you open up the RAW file that you take out of this camera, depending upon what editing program you use, it is going to be translated in a very different way. They're all open to interpretation, okay? For this example right here, I took a Fujifilm RAW file straight out of camera from an X-T5. I then had it demosaic in other words, opened it up and looked at it, in Capture One, Fuji X RAW Studio, Iridiant Developer, Lightroom Classic, and DxO Deep Prime. And as you can see, with all of them opened right here, they look very different with regard to color. And just to be clear, for this test, all I did was open it up in each program and save it out as a JPEG or a DNG. I used whatever default settings were in each program. I did not touch or apply or edit anything. And you'll definitely start to notice if you've been using Fujifilm cameras for a while, certain types of shooting conditions that will cause problems. For example, have a look at the background here, really what it should look like and what it looks like when you do it in Capture One or you do it straight out of the camera JPEG. Now, to be clear, there are adjustments that you can make in Lightroom or any other demosaicing program that can help alleviate some of those problems. However, this is the subject for another video for another day. But for today, I simply wanted you to understand that there is a pretty big difference between an X-Trans sensor and a Bayer sensor. And if you're using Fujifilm, most likely, you're using an X-Trans sensor, unless you're using the GFX 100 RF. In that case, it is a Bayer sensor. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found today's video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I'm going to be signing off now, but have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you in a new video soon. Take care.